patterns of beta weights when there's multicollinearity or collinearity taking place. Another uh, observation worth pointing out is that the standard errors associated with the two uh, independent variables that appear to be associated with some uh, multicollinearity issues or collinearity issues or a combination of both is that the standard errors are basically double the size of the other variable. Now they still came out statistically significant but there will be plenty of cases where they will not come out statistically significantly. All right, so they're nearly double. And those are the two main uh, problems with multicollinearity. You end up getting much larger standard errors, which often results in non-significant results, and or you get at least one uh, predictor's beta weights in a nonsensical direction. How can we measure uh, multicollinearity? There are two main um, uh, approaches. Tolerance is one. And the other one is variance inflation factor, and they're both very closely related to each other. So what's tolerance? It's the percentage of variance in the independent variable that is not accounted for by the other independent variables. So basically, tolerance is a multiple regression analysis where the independent variable is regressed onto the other independent variables in the multiple regression analysis. And then you get an R-squared value from that, and you... Uh, simply use the number 1 and subtract that r-squared value from it. So whatever's left over in variance that's not accounted for is considered tolerance. More co most commonly, tolerance values of 0 0.10 or less um, uh, are cited as problematic. And I also see uh, values of 0 0.20 as being suggested as the lowest level that tolerance can be. So tolerance a lower number suggests that there's less and less tolerance associated with the analysis and that the standard errors and beta weights will become progressively unstable. Okay, so uh, in practice we want larger tolerance levels than 0 0.10 and some people suggest 0 0.20. Variance inflation factor is simply the reciprocal of tolerance. Uh, so it's 1 divided by tolerance. And the variance inflation factor, also, although perfectly correlated with tolerance and is fundamentally based on tolerance, it does give uh, an indication uh, to the degree to which the standard errors will be inflated due to the levels of collinearity or multicollinearity. Uh, VIF values of 10 or greater are often cited as indicative of problematic. And you can see why that makes sense, is that above, in the previous slide, I suggested that 0 0.10 was a tolerance level that is used as the rule of thumb. And if you uh, take 1 and divide uh, 0 0.10, uh, you get 10 as an inflation factor. So this means that we expect the standard errors to be inflated by a factor of 10 in comparison to the case where there wouldn't be any correlations whatsoever between your independent variables. If you argue that a tolerance level of 0.25, which means that 25% of the variance in the independent variable is unique to itself and independent of the other independent variables, then uh, you would be arguing that a variance inflation factor of 4 is uh, the maximum that you would allow in a regression analysis. And some people have argued that. What can you do about multicollinearity? First, check to see if one of your predictor variables uh, is a duplicate. This happens more often than you might think. I get uh, consulted by somebody uh, with a apparent multicollinearity problem and it turns out that they simply entered the, the same variable twice and called it something differently or they calculated it uh, from a series of other variables and they did so twice. You can remove the redundant variable and in this case I don't mean a duplicate variable I mean a variable that is redundant with another because it's essentially measuring the same thing. Uh, so you might find yourself measuring something like the amount of time that people spend uh, in their car and the amount of time uh, that they spend driving a car, for example. Uh, you'll find that those two pieces of information uh, uh, may be redundant for a lot of people.
and so you'll get a large, a large amount of multicollinearity or collinearity. Uh, so what you can do is if you have similar variables that are actually providing uh, arguably useful information and that you think that together, if you add the two scores together uh, and form an aggregate, you'll get a better uh, representation of your variable of interest, then you can aggregate them together. Uh, increasing sample size will help uh, reduce the problems associated mu uh, with multicollinearity. It won't reduce the variance inflation factor or tolerance levels, but increasing the sample size will uh, add more stability to the uh, standard errors and the beta weights. If you'd like more information about multicollinearity, where I have references that you can use to cite the various uh, rules of thumb for uh, tolerance and variation inflation factors, as well as additional information related to multicollinearity, I encourage you to check out uh, the entry that I have uh, on that. And my website looks uh, like this. And in fact, that's the entry on multicollinearity uh, that I'll be uh, continually updating with uh, more and more up-to-date information and interesting papers to, give, uh, to provide uh, insight on the topic of uh, multicollinearity. Thanks for listening.